and we are seeing uh, probably one of the fastest matrix diversifications in the country, in Colombia, in very little time. At least in Latin America. If we see other Latin American countries, we it's very difficult to to see such a such a growth, a rapid growth on 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 renewable. I mean, when I talk about renewable, I talk about solar, about wind. Um, in such a short period of time. Welcome to Why Colombia, the podcast where we dive into the real stories of those who have taken a chance to invest in Colombia and have come out on top. I am Julio Cesar Puentes, Vice President of Foreign Investment at ProColombia, and together with the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Tourism, we are thrilled to invite you to join us on this journey of discovery. Join into our podcast to unlock the full potential of Colombia as a destination for foreign direct investment. Welcome to Why Colombia. Uh, today, we are with, with Guido Patrignani, CEO of Greenwood Energy, a, a company specialized in structuring technical and financial solutions in efficient and environmentally uh, friendly energy sources. Their focus is in solar energy, biomass, biogas, cogeneration, natural gas, energy storage, and microgrids. Guido has over 10 years of experience in the Argentine energy sector with a focus on hydrocarbon extraction and transportation infrastructure. Guido, welcome. And tell us why Colombia, why Greenwood choose Colombia? Well, when investing in Latin America, um, investors have to have to um, take good care of choosing very well the country because you can find extreme opposites right next to the other. Like, for example, the case of Colombia that is right next to Venezuela, right? So, Greenwood Energy uh, invests uh, um, in countries with a stable track record, where with clear rules and um, uh, and with a and with a thriving sector in which we are investing. In the case of Colombia, we are seeing a country with a very stable uh, exchange rate during the last 20 years a very stable um, inflation uh, with some bumps in the last years, but in the overall picture, it's a very stable country with clear rules uh, where institutions are respected and and that grants uh, investors the confidence of stepping into the country. So basically it was a natural, um, a natural decision when, when analyzing the whole region of Latin America, Colombia is one of the most stable and serious countries in the continent. Wonderful. Uh, would you mind to take uh, to share with us a little bit more about uh, the project that you are doing in Colombia? Well, in Colombia, we are um, moving forward with um, with three different projects, uh, being the largest and the most important one in the country, our Terra Initiative. Terra Initiative is the largest solar project ever developed with an indigenous community in South America. It involves 160 megawatts uh, of solar energy. But what makes the project completely different to any other uh, solar project is basically its environmental and its social impact. In this case, the Terra Initiative, developed jointly with the Aruaco indigenous community, uh, will provide um, the construction of three new indigenous towns for the Aruaco people that will give a housing solution to nearly 150 families, which represents roughly 1,000 indigenous people. But also, these towns, which will be built right next to the, to the solar plants, um, will uh, provide uh, the indigenous people with skilled jobs, because living right next to the solar plants make them the ideal workforce for the operation and maintenance activities of the solar plants. So we are training the indigenous in inhabitants of the Terra towns so they can provide this uh, service on site and they can uh, basically grow in their, in their education from the renewable energy uh, sector. And then, third, uh, we are transferring the plants to the indigenous community after the 25th year. So basically, uh, after the, the year 25, they will be 100% owners of the energy assets. Why? During the first 25 years of operations of each plant, they will receive an environmental fee that will allow them to buy 
uh, land within their sacred territory of Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, which is a very uh, valuable and significant ecological region in the whole world. The International Union for Conservation of Nature has established this area in the northwest of Colombia as the most irreplaceable nature reserve in the world. So Terra Initiative is collaborating not only with the indigenous communities, but with their environmental preservation program. And that's what makes uh, Terra different to any other solar energy projects uh, we have seen worldwide, actually. Wonderful. Rick, uh, Gil, what, which consider you has been the more challenging, uh, challenging uh, uh, thing or barrier that you had to uh, face in this project in Colombia? Well, um, in general terms, doing something that doesn't have any track record anywhere in the world, Uh, because we look something, you know, for something similar we could follow and uh, we couldn't find anything. But uh, basically we are opening the path. So I believe that every time any company uh, chooses to open the path by themselves, everything is difficult from the simplest uh, aspect, right? Uh, in this case, it has been the mindset. The mindset of... of, of our partners, the mindset of the community in general, of the government, because everyone is used to another type of projects. So once we have built with the community the whole project, they have to explain it. Their leaders have to explain it inside of the community. We have to explain it, you know, uh, basically to our partners uh, and, and then to the government. So explaining it uh, and, and showing what, how different it is to any other project it's probably the biggest challenge we've, we face with this project. Thank you, Guido. Why do you want to share a little bit more about how is to work with the uh, indigenous community in, in, in Colombia? How, I mean, tell us about that experience. Well, um, just to be frank, I haven't seen any indigenous people while living, in, I'm from Argentina, while living in Argentina. My first engagement with indigenous community has been in Colombia and and it has been a complete you know surprise uh, and I will talk about the Aruaco people in particular which are our partners right um, the Aruaco people uh, call us the elder brothers and and actually when I started understanding how they live how they treat each other how they work together um, I start understanding uh, why was that, why they are the bigger, uh, the elder, uh, why the, they are the elder brothers and we are the younger brothers. Um, they have a culture which is very difficult to, to align to any known culture uh, because sometimes you may find certain things that, that can be similar to Buddhism, for example, or, but it, there's something unique completely unique about their wisdom, their culture, their knowledge, and, and, and they believe a lot in dialogue, right? So the power of words. Um, when you have to decide certain aspects of the project, uh, we had to uh, arrange councils or they arranged councils where uh, each, each member of their side and on our side talked and exposed the points and And then, and then we discuss each point. It, it was, it has been a, a very nutritive and and deep experience working with indigenous communities, and and that's why we are very very happy to have developed a, such a uh, important project with the community, because this opens the door to other companies in other sectors, uh, not only to work with them but to work with the indigenous communities in Colombia. Because Colombia is one of Latin America's uh, largest countries in terms of indigenous population and, and diversity. That is very important. It's a huge diversity and the government is, is, has always done a lot and now is doing even more to protect this diversity of the indigenous culture, which I believe is the most valuable asset uh, Colombia has in terms of culture. Well. 
Thank you, Guido. Um, last but not least, um, you are investing in a in a in a sector in Colombia that is that is really uh, or pretty uh, new in Colombia that is renew renewable energy. Um, have you? Well, I mean, uh, Greenwood have seen Colombia as a potential destina destination for renewable uh, investment uh, apart from the things that you're doing right now? Well, um, in terms of the energy sector, um, we need to bear in mind that Colombia, 70% of the of the matrix of uh, the energy matrix of Colombia is renewable. Hydro, hydropower, 70%. The other 30%, it's basically thermal, right? So Colombia has a clean matrix. What happened towards climate change? Um, they are the country is facing, uh, you know, certain risks on 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 hydropower capacity, and and in terms of energy sector, Colombia has been also um, much responsible for the long term. So. A lot has been done in the energy transition in the country and a lot is going on in the energy transition in the country. And we are seeing uh, probably one of the fastest matrix diversifications in the country, in Colombia, in very little time. At least in Latin America. If we see other Latin American countries, we, it's very difficult to, to see such a, such a growth, a rapid growth on, on, on renewable. I mean, when I talk about renewable, I talk about solar about wind um, in such a short period of time. Just in this, in this, uh, in this uh, build we've, we've seen in this uh, last uh, bid carried out by the government, we've seen that 80% uh, of the projects have been uh, renewable, right? So, so we see, we see a, a rapid transformation and that is only uh, possible in countries where you have the you know, robust, robust institutions and clear uh, and clear rules. Those are the keys to make any rapid transformation. Basically, because you have the base, the institutional base to do so. So, if we combine the current energy energy transition Colombia is going through and is and is entering into with the track record, the stable track record in macroeconomic uh, aspect of the country. Um, we will see probably in the next decade many sectors thriving in the country uh, due to due to the strong and responsible macroeconomic politics uh, applied in in Colombia. Okay, Guido, thank you very much for your answers. Um, the last question: You have to deliver a message to the international community of investors and entrepreneurs. What would be that message for them? Colombia is a very friendly country in terms of uh, business and corporations. It's really easy and simple to establish a company in Colombia. Um, people are really willing to, to help new companies, foreign companies, and there is missing a lot of infrastructure in certain areas of the country uh, where investments are needed. and. Basically, you have the whole, the whole package. You have the, the infrastructure requirements in certain areas of the country. You have the macroeconomic um, robustness, long term. Um, and basically, you have a good reception from the government and the people of newcomers to the country. So I would recommend definitely to at least Come to Colombia, visit uh, you know the country, the different uh, areas of the country, know its people, and and then uh, you can decide by yourself. You thank you very much on behalf of the Ministry of uh, Trade, Industry, and Tourism uh, and Pro Colombia. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and your research in Colombia. My pleasure, Julio. Thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs>